everybody it's Catherine from Jane Catherine on books and I'm back with another couple of books for my five star project uh, as you recall I am reading all the 27 27 2017 five star books uh, recommended from books and la la and I've reviewed two so far and I've got another two to talk about with you here um, Books and La La, she gave, uh, Kaylee, she gave all these books five stars and I'm very interested to see how things alter, change, whether we agree or what the differences are. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. So the next book I wish to talk about is Little Fires by Celesting. And um, this has been everywhere on BookTube. It's very hyped. It's been very well documented. Um, it, many people absolutely love this book and um, I thought yeah I, I, uh, I was looking forward to it and thought that uh, I was going to be able to give it a five star as well however I gave it four stars which um, I felt was a, a, a good rating overall because for me there were some parts in here where I really enjoyed the writing I really enjoyed what was happening that particular point in the plot how it was developing uh, and it was five stars and then there were parts in this where I felt it went down to a 2.5 uh, certainly the first section of the book I found very mundane um, yeah not all that much happening really uh, and so to even it out as a whole I gave it four stars and I think that's my overall view of it is that um, there were so many things I liked about it however I didn't think it worked as a book overall I don't think it felt a little disjointed and um, I think it was trying too hard to cover too much in my personal opinion still a very good book so with this we start off with the fire so that's no spoiler we start off with the fire the with the richardson's a family called the richardson uh their their home burns down we've got eleanor richardson and her husband uh eleanor was brought up in shaker heights and this is very much a man-made dropping things very much a man-made town in america very much uh controlled by it sort of got its own like council that says what color you can uh, you can paint your houses what sort of windows you can have how you've got to keep your front lawns how you've got to behave da -de da -de da uh it just reminded me of my lovely middle grey book called perfect um which um i did a review on i'll see if i can find that for you and that was everybody had to behave in a certain way and be perfect and happy and nothing out of the ordinary happened um so they've got four children we've got trip who's the eldest and he's uh, a bit of a lad high school or whatever i don't quite understand the the school system over in america it's very very different to here in the uk so i won't try and, and and follow it but you know he's a young adult shall we say he's a bit of a lad you know he's a bit of a a, a girl's lad he likes the ladies shall we say he loves them then leaves them uh, from what i can gather uh we've got another son called moody who is a is a very gentle soul he is quite sensitive um he gets annoyed at times with how trip treats girls and uh, he's you know a lovely just well-rounded sensitive kid um, then we've got Lexi she's uh, very much the mummy's girl she's very much uh, into fashion and uh, being the it girl shall we say she likes to fit in she likes to be centre of attention and then we've got Izzy who is the youngest and Izzy is they all think that she's strange she doesn't conform and I love her for that actually she's one of my favorite characters I love her she doesn't conform she kicks out because shaker heights why should you paint your door the same color as everybody else why should you have to put your dustbins out in a certain way and the lid facing left or right or whatever and so she's always been what they call a difficult child um, and there were difficult circumstances around uh, her birth and um, there's never really been a great bond between herself and Eleanor Richardson which is a shame uh, but 
Izzy is a I love her character. Uh, she perhaps goes a little bit too far. You could imagine her being one of the suffragettes back in the day. She'd have certainly uh, tied herself to the railings. Um, and the other family that we have in this um, is... I don't even think we find out what their, their surname is, to be fair. Uh, but we have Mia and Grace. I'm sure her name's... No, it's not. It's Pearl. Pearl. I want to call her Grace. So we've got Mia, a single mother, and we've got her daughter Pearl, who they they sort of move around a lot. They never settle in, in one place. Uh, Mia is an artist. She does all sorts of odd jobs to make ends meet, but really um, she's a very good artist and wants to really do that as a full-time career. They move into town and basically the book is we've got all sorts of dramas all sorts of things going on within the two families and um mainly that's that's the basis of it all um there are some very important issues in here and i'll just go through my list so that i don't miss any out because i, I do think that these are uh, very important issues to be covered so we talk about peer pressure uh, how and especially sort of we get to high school age you know there's a lot of uh, pressure to wear the right trainers to do the right thing to be in the right crowd um, sticking up for what is right you know and looking out for the underdog and I think Izzy's character is very much um, in favour of this and tries to really look out for the underdog even though her family think that she's just causing trouble um the family dynamics you know as we get in all families mother daughter relationships uh the two different sides of those relationships and we've got the side of mother daughter relationships from eleanor and her two daughters and we've also got mia with her relationship with pearl which is complete contrast um we also look at um, premature babies and how the impact that has on the mother and the the child and um, yeah I, I can relate to that really I was premature which sort of back in 1960 when I was born um, unless you were sort of living near a, a large hospital you didn't always make it and I, I suppose I was meant to be here really meant to be here uh, because we were living in Sheffield and Northern General Hospital where actually I did train did my nurse training there um, had a special care baby unit which very much was in its infancy back in those days but anyway um, but they didn't have facilities for the mother to stay and my mum was quite ill when she had me so they just sent my mum home and um, you know it wasn't easy for her to come in and visit me and she was too ill to so um, yeah I, I, I do you know I do see that side to things and I know my mum and I did have a chat about this um, a few years ago I think really and also how I, I had a very good bond with my nana my mum's mum um, because she used to live near her and she used to catch two buses every day to come and sit with me in that incubator and um, you know a fantastic relationship developed between my nan and myself so yeah very interesting to read that to see what the dynamics were in this book um, infertility and adoption is a big theme here teenage pregnancy mental ill health so some fantastic themes um, they were covered well however there's a great big list and I think you know there was too much crammed in I would have preferred a few of these being chosen and looked at in more depth so really you were going along a plot line about something teenage pregnancy a few pages on that and oh lo and behold you know we've got some mental ill health showing its head or we've got something else so for me I'm sorry the book didn't work as a whole um I liked it, I didn't love it, and so therefore, as I've said, I gave it four stars as a roundup. Now, I'll have to get this from the floor, seeing as it's gone flying on the floor. And so the next one is Radio Silence, Alice Oseman, another um, book that has been well documented on Booktube, and many people have loved it. Um, I've only just finished this. I did a buddy read, I quite like this colour, 
the cover on this. I did a buddy read with my lovely booktube bestie, Kerry Ann from Woman vs Books. We, we try to do a buddy read every month. And um, yeah, what do I say about Radio Silence? It's definitely a YA contemporary. It's, um, I think it's got an interesting format to it. So um, we've got the normal style of narration and then ever so often we get excerpts from a podcast and I think that makes it very fresh and of the moment and suitable for a YA audience. And again, in a way, this is a family drama of a sort, I would say. Um, we have two main protagonists in here. Um, we have Karis and... No, sorry. Well, Karis is, is but she's... She's in the background, shall we say. She's she's a small character, but she's sort of a, a quite a, an important theme, shall we say. She's a theme throughout, rather just to put than just a person. Um, then we have Frances, who is um, head girl of a of a, a sort of a prestigious school where everything has to be just so and everything has to be conformed to and the head girl has to be a b and c um and so she adheres to that and people don't really know the real francis for quite some while because she's got to um she's got to keep up with the standards that the school have set her to be able to be head girl she's very very clever very intelligent she's heading for cambridge and um, so she's got to get buckled down and just study 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 and then the the main um person that we've got is alid and he lives across the road and he's got this sister caris who used to be a friend a good friend of um Francis and um, we start to get a nice friendship. I do like the friendship in here of um, Alid and Caris and it's nice to see that I think both of them in their own way are struggling with coming to terms with how they have to behave at school, what's expected of them academically, um, especially Alid Scott, a mum who is a governor and uh, they don't do anything else in that household but study. So I really loved that friendship. Um, I do have to say that I did struggle with this, especially at the beginning. I really struggled with it. Uh, it took me a while to get into the the idea of it, to get into the um, the podcast, what was happening in the podcast. Um, I think a lot of that was my age, I have to say. You know, there's a lot of... I know when I get texts from my boys, I'm thinking, right, let me decipher what they mean here, you know. Um, so I think it's very much targeted at a YA audience. And, you know, sometimes I, I've been enjoying some contemporary YA recently and I've loved some of it so much um, that I, I've sort of come to the conclusion that, um, you know, it was suitable for whatever age group and you, it wasn't just targeted at a YA audience. But after reading this, um, I felt that very much it's a good book. I think it's very good for the themes, the themes that it covers. Um, and the main thing about this is the education system. So in a way, the podcast is a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a stab at the education system in the UK. We learn a lot about how kids are expected to get grades. There's another character in here called Daniel, who is the head boy and a, and a good friend of... Um, Alids and the pressure and, and I can understand this and I'm sure there's some of you out there that are going through this with your own kids the pressure that they're under to 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 get the grades to get to university in certain schools there's a there's a great push that university is only way to go and you won't do well in life unless you go to university and and you know the, the bunch of characters that we've got in here that are having to follow that are about to have nervous breakdowns and crack at the seams and um you know i i can um relate to how these kids are and i can also relate to being a parent and of course you always want the best for your kids but as a parent, I wanted them to be happy. And there was very much pressure 
on both my boys Adam and Joe to go to university and um, it, it, you know it wasn't good for either of them and, and, and neither of them actually finished their courses and, and you know that was that's sad for me because because they've ended up in a large amount of debt um, you know for for going for the years that they did i'm not disappointed in them I, i'm always proud of my boys as long as they do their best and i want what's happy for them and i i knew they weren't happy so my eldest it was very much yes you must you know going to university you, you know you're achieving these grades this is what you ought to go and do and it wasn't the right thing for him and my youngest uh, very very bright but a, an absolute brilliant musician and um, was really pushed into going to a very renowned shall we say academic establishment that's attached to the BBC in Salford um, and the course really um, wasn't for him wasn't for him and the pressure because it was such a, a top establishment and very few people got in you know the pressure I was worried about both my boys um, so I do see both sides of this and um, I think this is an a very important book for young adults you know 16 to 18 year olds 19 year olds that are considering where they want to go where whether they want to go to university don't be forced by other people and it's easy said than done and i think this book very well explains that some parents that you know that is not you'll do what we say and this is what we expect of you and some kids you know practically are at breaking point trying to achieve what their parents want them to um, and I think there's a lesson in here for all of us really you know for parents that yes you want your kids to do well and you want them to achieve the best they can um, but you know we don't want to push them so many young kids commit suicide because of pressures of, of uh, attaining the grades and we don't want that I think this is a very important book for all that age group to read because I think it lets them know that there are choices that there are other kids out there that are going through exactly the same of them and I like the outcome of the book in a way it's no you know in a way there are choices there are decisions that can be made that can be positive and there are ways out of uh, being pressured for whatever reason pressured by school pressured by family pressured by your peer group and i loved it for that so um i gave it 3.5 two grading systems i think really 3.5 for my own personal enjoyment of this book um i appreciated it i think it's an excellent book you know i gave it four stars for the book itself and the the excellent way it portrays the the topics of of now the topics of the education and the pressure on on young adults um i gave it four for that but you know i rate books on my personal enjoyment so it was a three to a 3.5 for that and i'll be honest you know it's not my age group it's not one of those ya that really is a ya uh, book that is its main audience but also thoroughly enjoyable uh, for adults it, it was okay as an adult reading this so you know I'm holding my hand up and say I'm really too old for this book um, but I do think that you know young adults should read this especially those that are taking the GCSEs and their A-levels uh, you know it must be a bit of a comforter bit of a comforter and also the styling of having the podcast and uh, you know the social media texts and comments so there we go there's another two books for my five star project and i'll speak to you again soon bye for now